Finally this week on the program, after decades in the business, he is vacating the uh, Anchorman's chair. He's also just brought out his uh, autobiography, Rian Kreivachen, What's News? Rian, a very warm welcome. It's so good to have you. Welcome to the Mags on Media Makeup Room. I'll tell you why we've dragged you Thank here. You, How many times in your illustrious career have you sat in front of these lights and had makeup applied? Well, between <laughs> seven and 8,000 times, you know, but I must admit that lately I haven't been going for makeup but for panel beating. Yeah, I think I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, makeup's horrible, isn't it? Eh? It is, yes, it but really I suppose is, it's one of it's the one perils of the, of the yeah. job, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When you're sitting and either in the makeup chair or as you move through to, to the bulletin studio, what's going through your mind? Well, in the first place, um, I, I try to, uh, you know, recap on the day's news that I mm. either heard on radio or read in the newspapers or seen on morning television, mm. and um, then wonder by myself, how are they going to elaborate mm. on that tonight? Mm. And uh, what will be the major news tonight? Mm. So that is what actually I goes mean, through. I mean, mind. one of the things I think that people don't understand about news presenters is you're not sitting in front of a camera intoning the news. You're a journalist. You've got to have an understanding of the current affairs environment. You've got to be steeped in the business, haven't you? That is so true, mm. you know, and that is why people often mm. find it interesting that I don't have time to read books because mm. I read newspapers and news magazines. Mm. And by the time I've finished them, there's hardly mm. any time left yeah. for uh, reading a book. That I leave yeah. for my holidays. I was going to say, you, you maybe not time to read the book, but you've certainly written one. It's a rollicking good read and full of, <laughs> full of nostalgia. I, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Let's go back. Um, and I know that you have a, a career that started in radio, but principally let's talk about television if we can. The first television bulletin that you read. Come on, man, you must have been very nervous. That adrenaline was surging, the heart was pounding. Or not, I don't know. Look, there was no time to be nervous yeah. because um, I stood in for a presenter who didn't pitch. Yeah. And they... Uh, Mnir Kreivach and you're on. Is that, absolutely is that how it works? that's what happened because yeah. I had had um, 10 years' experience at, as a radio mm. news reader by that time. And I was a news mm. studio director. Mm. So I knew the studio discipline. I knew how to interpret a new script. And they just said, look, guy, you have to help us out now. So they added my name mm -hmm. to the shift list and forgot to take it off. Let's talk a little bit about you. Um, national treasure, cultural icon, all of these things. <laughs> you've seen them yourself. Uh, does that sit comfortably with you? Are television news anchors, are you stars? Are you celebrities? Well, no. Nah. I don't Come on, Rian, you're a celebrity. No, yeah? I don't consider myself yeah. a celebrity at all for mm. the simple reason that working for the national broadcaster, mm. I'm a public servant mm. because I have to inform the entire spectrum of the South African population mm. every evening uh, mm. about the day's news. And um, that is my work. Mm. Um, I'm not part of the, the popularity mm. race or the uh, fashion race. You don't do red you... carpets, that's what you're no, saying. No, <laughs> no, I'm not interested in it either. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know after 7,000 bulletins, what, 37 years in the business, why is it time to stop? You know, Alfred Law Tennyson said, the old order changeth yield in mm. place to new. Mm. And I thought I would much rather leave the industry yeah. at a high mm. than waiting for a low and then, mm. you know, disappear yeah. quietly. Uh, I didn't think uh, that it would be with such a bang, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was also mm. a good idea, in my opinion, to uh, say goodbye on the 26th of November mm to the date, mm. exactly 37 years after I'd read my, mm. my first news bulletin. And are you one of these people that looks back and will you be wistful and nostalgic or you're a forward-thinking South African where you say, been there, done that, ticked the box, been hugely successful, now I'm going to reinvent myself? Got the t-shirt, mm. yes. Um, I will most certainly try and reinvent myself, try and find something else to do to keep me busy. Although I must say for the first two or three months, mm. I am going to take it easy and relax and mm. go to the movies and concerts and shows and mm. away for weekends and so on. But I couldn't, I simply couldn't imagine mm. myself mm. sitting doing nothing. Mm. I have to be active. And the only industry I know is broadcasting. Mm. So who knows, I might end up in radio mm. again where I started mm. my career or uh, find something else in television. Mm. But there is nothing 
on the cards mm. at the moment. We'll see what happens. As, as I'm watching you, and uh, there's your camera there, there's my camera there, we, we're both enjoying the discourse. I would also suggest to you that part of why we do this there's an addiction to it. You, oh, we're yes. addicted to the adrenaline. Absolutely. And the curtain's going to fall and the adrenaline surge will stop. You're going to miss that. Yes, mm. you know, I told a journalist the mm. other day that a news presentation, television news, is like a virus mm. that gets into your blood mm. or it's like being addicted to a drug. I, I think it will be extremely difficult to kick the habit. Mm. You're known for your obsessive love of language, both Afrikaans and English. Do you think the news business, perhaps, in this age of 24-hour news, in fact, the 24-second news cycle, if you look at social media, do you think we've forgotten those deep language principles? I think we have, mm. to a great degree. Um, I can ma uh, mainly speak for Afrikaans, mm. and in Afrikaans it is certainly the case. Mm. I sometimes hear atrocities mm -hmm. on air, you know, as far as standard Afrikaans mm. language uses. How do you fix it? Concern. How do I fix it? Mm. Or how do we fix it? How does well, the industry fix it? Uh, that is difficult because, mm. you know, if you have 30 seconds to cover important news items, mm. um, there's hardly anything you can do about it. But I think people can at least pay attention to their diction. Mm. Uh, to good pronunciation, mm. correct pronunciation of personal and place mm. names that in itself would, mm. uh, would make a big difference. So a little bit of research is a good thing yes. and also maybe reading the bulletin before it goes to air. That mm. is probably the, the main key <laughs> to success, <laughs> preparation mm. and no one is so good that it mm. is never necessary sure. to prepare. You know, Rian, I'm still bowled over at 7,000 news bulletins. I mean, that is a lot, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of news reading. Yes. Be honest, think back on some of the mistakes you've made, because they must be there. Yes, mm. there, One there, or two. <laughs> there are mistakes. I'm trying to think of them mm. now. It has happened that I mispronounced words. I will never forget when um, the, uh, the pop group... Uh, coming back to you, coming back to you. It will come back to me. Yeah. Do you want to park they, it, they, it will come back? Yeah. They, they, they <laughs> had a very, very strange name, yeah. and I had never heard of them yes. before. Oh, sorry. That's your phone. It's obviously someone that's... This it's is an, it's an, it's unforgivable. It's an urgent call. Do you want to take the call? No, no, definitely not. You do it's know we're going to keep this in the interview, don't it's, you? It's only my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully he will give me a clean bill yeah. of health. I forgot to switch this yeah, thing off. It's not a problem. Wretched have you remembered the pop group? Um, you haven't, have you? I haven't. <laughs> and my daughter yeah. mocked me for months on end. It will come back to me just yeah. now. Yeah. Um, We're going to hold you to that, sir. Yes. You've got to remember the name yes. of the pop group. Let me ask you this question. You have worked uh, at the public broadcaster, uh, which, and I, I don't want to get into a debate about the merits of the public broadcaster and, and where it stands politically, but uh, often it is seen as a mouthpiece of government. Yeah. You seem to have risen above that, both with the old dispensation and with the new dispensation. Yeah. How have you done that? Before I started my broadcasting mm. career, or when I embarked on the career, mm. I decided never to become involved with politics. Mm. I consider myself a career broadcaster. Mm. Like you have career diplomats, mm. they serve the government of the day, irrespective of sure. who it is. Mm. And I had exactly the same approach in broadcasting. I couldn't care who was uh, in charge mm. of government or the SABC. I did my work to the best of my professional mm. ability as a career broadcaster. But you've also must have experienced pressure in that regard. Though. Oh yes, mm. indeed. How did you um, deal with that? In, in, in both dispensations. Mm. Well, I simply try to be to be as professional as, as, as possible, you know. You, mm. you can't be influenced to a degree where it would have an effect on your presentation. You take cognizance of what is said and you try to accommodate people wherever you can and as far as you can, mm. but mm. in the end, you have to remain the consummate mm. profession. Rian Kravachan, you also have uh, the... I've remembered the name. Thank goodness. He's remembered the name. The yes. name is? Yes. In Excess. In Excess. Yes, I call I them Inks. Inks, yes. that's right. In Excess. In yeah. the news. And my daughter was so embarrassed. <laughs> she was a teenager at that yeah. stage. Yeah. And only after the news yeah. I heard that it was In Excess. In Excess, <laughs> yeah. And then you went out and bought all oh. their albums. No, you didn't. Um, I want to talk to you about your power of self-deprecation. And we're going to play it. Um, I cannot let you get away with the Luries last year, I think it was. Yes, it was. And the Jacuzzi. Yes. 
How, I what, how, what, how did you get convinced to do that? Oh, which was fairly easy, yeah. Jeremy, um, because there was a precedent. Yeah. Um, about eight years ago, I was asked to mm. mime the voice of Jan Blom, an yeah, Afrikaans yeah. pop singer, mm -hmm. playing the guitar, mm. pretending to be him, and he would then mime the news with mm. my voice. And um, I immediately accepted the invitation to do that, and they were absolutely flabbergasted mm. that I had agreed to yeah. do that. Yeah. And then people started seeing the other side of Rian Kravach, mm. and that I was not merely a mechanical reading machine. Mm. And then last year, the producers of the Luris invited me to be one of the, uh, the MCs. Mm. I agreed, and then they said, but you have to make a promo for mm. us. And I said, yeah, sure, of course yeah. I will There you thought, that. I'm just going to do something to yes, the camera. Yes, yes and yeah. probably on chroma key and so on, <laughs> but it didn't happen that way. And when the producer told me that I would have yeah. to spend some time in a jacuzzi yes. wearing a suit, yes. I said, yeah, sure. Sure. What did Mrs. Kreivachen say? She was cool. She with didn't it, think so she, it was a yes. very good idea yeah. because she was concerned about the yeah. <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, the the suit. You know, mm. it, it 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 shrunk about two sizes. Sure. I had to yeah. throw it away, and um, then um, we spent four hours filming that promo, and I was wrinkled like a prune mm. when I got mm. out. But uh, also there's a nice lesson there is, uh, you know, as important a job as you do, for goodness sake, don't take yourself too seriously. Precisely. You know, I mean, that, that's a good life lesson, Precisely. isn't it? Don't yeah. try to be larger mm. than life. Mm. I want to end this conversation. Uh, it's, it's very obvious, it's very self-evident in this book that uh, two things are important to you. One, uh, your family and friends and religion is important. Yes. That remains, those remain guiding pillars in your life. Yes, I grew up in a very religious family. And um, it, it has really always been a, a, a pillar in my life, and um, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Mm. And my family, of course, um, is very, very dear to me. I have enjoyed um, the support of my wife of 41 years. Mm. Uh, during the 37 years of broadcasting on television, and nights, being, yeah. being away mm. from home for at least 7,000 nights, mm. That must not have been easy for her, could not mm. have been easy. And um, so it's wonderful to be able to, to have their support, you know, my daughter's support and my wife's mm. support. Well, the book is called Rian Kreivachen, What's News? Uh, there you go, that's the cover. Uh, it is in all good bookshops uh, right now, and it really is worth a read, not only for an incredible uh, life story, but also gives a wonderful uh, modern history of South Africa, both uh, pre- and uh, post-democracy. Rian, a great pleasure. Good luck in whatever you decide to do. Thanks for popping into Thank the makeup you, room. In Thank excess. You so much. Don't forget yes, that. In excess. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's this week's program. The conversation continues 24 7, both on Facebook and on Twitter. Goodbye to you, and thank you for watching.